Hello. And Elizabeth, Hello. are you able to respond to us? You're on mute. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Evelyn. Elizabeth, talk. <laughs> we can see you, Elizabeth, but are you able to speak? Just want to make sure. I'm able to speak. And okay. you can hear her just Great. fine. Perfect. Okay, good. We're good to go. All right. Thank you. Calling to order the Tuesday, September 6th, 2022 uh, Utility Commission meeting. Uh, we'll start with roll call, and I will start on my left and then finish with Zoom. Chris Kirksey. Clark Wilson. Jonathan Miller. Christopher Meekin. And Zoom. It was muted, but we'll Elizabeth note that. Elizabeth Gray. There you go. There we go. Thank you very much. We will open it up for public comments. I didn't see any written, but just want to confirm if there were any public comments. I'm coming up for public comment. You don't need to move anything. It's fine. Uh, Phil McDuffie, 4711 Timberline. Also your illustrious <laughs> liaison. Uh, so I had an agenda item. It needs to go through some clearing, but basically we will be coming back on, uh, you know, as you know, we have a bond election coming up in November. One of the big issues on the bond election is the water utility, you know, capital improvement project. That is to the tune, if the voters voted through of $5.3 million, it will be based on a 30 year term so the bonds go out, basically the, the voters say, yes, we're granting authority to in debt the city of Rollingwood up to $5.3 million. Then it goes out and basically different funding organizations say, uh, I'll do that for, and whoever bids us the lowest interest rate wins and then the funds come in, those will be paid out from, that will add additional taxation. Uh, and let me look, roughly, so as you can tell, because we don't know what the interest rate will be until the bonds are actually done, all we can do is kind of estimate. What they're estimating, if at the current interest rates, they're estimating that that would result in roughly $221.63 per year additional cost per million dollars of tax value. That's not your, that's not what the city's, that's not what they say your house is worth, that's what you get taxed on. So some of us who have been around a long time, luckily our values have risen higher than our current taxed level but that's per million so we'll be coming back to basically have you guys basically be engaged in some form we're still trying to work that out to educate our citizenry on why they might want to vote for this uh, there is kind of a slippery slope of how much we can suggest but I, I think we've all suffered with broken water lines and boil water noses and that type of thing. And that, that's one of the issues that will be addressed with this. Another one is there are some uh, low water issues throughout the city that will be addressed with this as well. And so um, low water pressure, which can really be a problem, particularly if you have a fire. So, um, so that's what we have on that. And I will, is there anything else that needs to be said here, Ashley? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, the city's bond council will be working on putting together all of that information that the city can share, factual information about the bond election, and then um, we'll be sharing that with all of our boards and commissions. So we look forward to having y'all engaged on that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Elizabeth. Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate time, if there are any questions, or... Go for it. Yeah, please. Let's find out um, what... So, um, 
I was just wondering, I, I tried to watch some of the budgeting meetings to understand, um, and there are, because of the um, increase in tax revenues uh, that the city of Austin and you know many other towns across uh, Texas are receiving, um, they, many of them are instituting um, a little bit of a tax break in various methods applied depending on where you are. Um, I did not know if um, that was something that was discussed in general on the city budget because if that were to play a role in this then communicating to residents like hey you know we need to do this because um, it's super necessary water infrastructure right um, and nobody wants to be Mississippi these days um, but you know you are getting a break elsewhere right well right now the city council is in process of setting the actual tax rate that will be applied at, uh, all that we have control over is the section that Rollingwood gets right the the part that Rollingwood gets but there have been discussions you know there are different rates that we are looking at and the city council has not yet voted on what rate to apply uh, and therefore I don't know how much I can say I, I have no idea where other people stand on it I do think there is a desire that was expressed from the mayor to at least offer I know one of the, one of the things we're looking at is what they call a no new uh, no new revenue rate I think that's what it's called but basically because your your valuation has gone up the tax rate would come down so that probably for the average house uh, you'll be paying the same amount of tax that you did last year okay and I think that it that does have a lot of merit because what we're really doing is allowing you our citizenry to choose what you value like where and, and we've been working hard on the budget to make sure that we're not uh, increasing the costs in general so I that is one of the options that we will be voting and looking at the other one quite frankly is not anything significant above that so both rates are rather low um, and then the citizenry get to choose of yes and we're willing to pay extra in order to address our water infrastructure issues yes we're willing to pay extra to perhaps remodel some of the facilities uh, down here at City Hall in order to get some things we want so that is the direction that is right now moving that will be cleared up within the next month or two um, but yeah I, I think we're looking at the same thing as Austin and other municipalities and we're being as responsible as we can possibly be with every one of your tax dollars so I think that's wonderful feedback thank you and I also think right. it would really help garner more enthusiasm for the capital improvements we have to do yeah I mean we're I once again one member but uh, I think there is a desire to actually let you guys decide what's important to you so um, and our job is to give you as much information as possible factual information to uh, let you make those decisions okay thank you yep great thank you appreciate it Moving on to the next, next item, which is discussion and possible action on the minutes from the July 12th, 2022 Utility Commission meeting. Minutes were provided. I move approval. Second. We have, uh, we have a motion and a second for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 I, I missed it and I abstain. And one abstain. 
with that, it passes. Thank you. Moving on to the regular agenda uh, discussion of possible action on a utility bill appeal for 4912 Rollingwood Drive. Hi, I'm David Bjork. I live at 4912 Rollingwood Drive. We've been here since uh, 2015. And I uh, have something I could pass out here that I think would make it easier for us to look at what I'm talking about. I only made five copies. So someone's not going to get one. We'll share. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I, I, oh. I, have, I have no power. <laughs> Okay, so what I was, first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and talk about what happened. It's been several months, and I'm sorry that it took till September to get here to, to talk about what happened in our backyard. Um, I have some pictures here that will help to explain what happened, but effectively we had a leak at the meter. I learned that it was on my side of the meter. Um, so I'm not here to dispute that there was a leak. What became troubling is when I got my bill and saw that it was 132,000 gallons that had been um, the result of this leak. And it just didn't seem to add up. So um, I wanted to put together some of the facts in terms of what we experienced when the leak occurred. You know, there was no loss of water pressure in the house. Um, there was no visible appearance of a leak as a, you know, a runoff or the ground was wet. Um, and what you're looking at there on the right is when, so Nate, if you guys remember Nate, came and knocked on my door and said he he'd, was there to read the meter and warned, told me that there's a leak at the meter. So we went back and looked and that's what that first picture is. Um, actually, if you look at that white stick, he had gone to get, he'd come back here, went back to the house, he went to get a, uh, a pump. He was using a hand pump at first. That didn't work, so he had to go back and get the electric pump to pump out so we could see what was going on in there. And we were able to reach down in there and turn the water off to the house. So looking at 132,000 gallons, subtract out what my family uses an average, which is around five to 7,000. So, you know, 125,000 gallons potentially came out of this leak, which would be the equivalent of me filling and emptying my swimming pool 27 times. So it just seemed like an awful lot of water came out of this leak. Now, we're not able to exactly pinpoint when the leak started. What's interesting is if I look at when my February bill was stopped to register the 132,000 gallons, it says February 23rd. Yet, when Nate came to my house, it was the 28th. So I don't know whether the city came out, read my meter, which would have meant there was no leak occurring at the 23rd, and then we really only had five days of, quote, leak time, which, again, makes 132,000 gallons of water seem not possible. When I was talking with, I think, Sharon several months ago, she said, well, you probably just had all the water going straight back down into the ground. I said, well, that's possible, but when we turn the water off, what you're looking at there on the left didn't just immediately empty. And that's why we had to go get a pump to pump it out. So that, so. It wasn't a case of I'm sitting on a cave or, and everything was just going straight back down on the ground. The, the picture on the right just shows you where, when you turn the water back on, where the accumulation was starting to, to come back up. But never at any time did what you're looking at in the center, did the water spill out and rise really above what that plastic conduit is there that, that I have put around the meter just, just because the back yard in, in my house the the elevation has come up a little bit 
Um, and Nate has talked to me in the past about, you know, we ought to move your meter up to the front because it fills up with leaves and it's really hard to read your meter. And I, he went and got a quote for me and it was several thousand dollars for us to move our meter up to the front yard. So, which I'm, I'm still thinking at some point might be a good idea since I don't like having this, what looks like a well in my backyard. Um, and the other data point I want to put out there is that I, I had people working in my backyard, not on this particular part of the yard, but they were building a retaining wall, they were staining a deck, they were, so I had people in my yard throughout the day. And at no point when I was getting texts back and forth from my landscaper did he ever say, hey, you've, you've got something going on back here. There's water accumulating and it's coming out to the tune of 125,000 gallons of water. So this, it just doesn't make sense. Now I did take the meter and gave it back to the city. They ran a test. The test came back, your meter's fine. Which again, it's just really peculiar that I still had 132,000 gallons. And I wish I had saved the, the portion of the pipe that was connected to the meter, because I did see it and it was a little slit. You, Barely, you couldn't put a dime in there. It was that small of, of a, a leak. But the reason I didn't save it is I had no idea that I was going to get a bill a month and a half or so later for a hundred or for three thousand dollars, and showing that that I had used uh, over one hundred twenty-five thousand gallons. So what I hope to accomplish today is understand what my options are, to look at this a little more closely and understand, you know, what can I do. I, I, I had a leak, I need to pay for that leak. Um, I just feel like a hundred, I, I feel like $3,000 is a lot to pay for a leak that I just don't really believe I had a 125,000 plus gallons of water come out of it. So I'll stop there. Any questions for me? Thank you. I'll open it up to any questions. Actually, I, I thought we had gotten away, with, got, gotten rid of the backyard beaters, but apparently not. <laughs> not long. Yeah. So I'm still, most of my house is the original house from 1959. Yeah. I still have all the original plumbing from 1959. Yeah, okay. Anyway, that was my misconception. That we, we so, and I think I saw in the materials provided, but so the, the, the leak was fixed, and then every month subsequent to that, from a usage standpoint, the bill has been what you would consider normal or consistent with historical usage following the completion of the repair? Um, yeah, I haven't been tracking my bill. I, ha I have the bill up into the, the point of the leak, and it was you know, 5,000, 6,000, 9,000, 6,000. December, there records zero, but then January records 14,000, so I'm assuming my meter wasn't read in December and January is really just the average of the two months. And then February jumps to 132,000. That's, that's what I was gonna ask, if you don't mind. You said there was zero used in December. Do we not read meters monthly, Ashley? Am I? We do, we always read meters monthly. I, I, can't, I can't see a time when we wouldn't read it, or if it's been unused for some reason, we either you know, fix it, or the next month it would be divided over My wife and I work at home, so we would have been home, um, particularly in December too, because we had both of our kids come home for, from school. So the, there would have been somebody in the house had the meter reader not been able to, and we don't lock our gates so they can access the back, it's no problem. So if there had been a problem, we would have been there to answer questions. But, but when, was, when was the repair completed? Um, within hours of the pictures when they were taken on the 28th. Okay, so of 20th of, of yeah. February 2022. 20, because I had to turn the water off to the house. Um, there was no way, we were without water until that was fixed. Do we have, do we have the billing information for, from the time it was repaired to? March, April, May, June.
Good evening, you guys. Um, so the leak adjustment that um, is presented before you today um, was used for Mr. Bjork's uh, prior year usage for his water. Um, so he had a offer of $1,990.42. And um, is that off the bill or that's the bill? The bill. So that was the leak adjustment. And I, I had yes. asked, and I appreciate you printing out. So I just, because I know we've gone through these, and but it's been a while since we've done an appeals. And we'd also recently, last year, within the year, um, revised a little bit the appeals process, mainly around time frame, which, you know, we're not, we're not concerned about the time frame here. But I think we wanted to just kind of remind ourselves kind of what, what is it that we can do? Like, what are our remedies, right? I mean, because certainly there's an issue here. We want to make sure that we address an issue. Mm -hmm. And then we're given the certain remedies that we're allowed to enact in order to helpfully try to come to, to some sort of agreeable solution. Um, so, but, but generally, if they, we see an issue with the water bill, uh, we say, okay, we, we understand there's a leak, the leak's been repaired, and then it tends to be wholesale, you know, I, as far as I know, the majority of our remedy is, you know, we can charge the wholesale rate so that even though there are, there are number, a number of step-ups within our billing rate now, Right, um, so we get rid of all of the step ups and all those accelerators that happen after certain amounts of volume, uh, but that it's the wholesale rate because the city, if that's what the meter says, ultimately the city still paid for that water from the city of Austin, and mm -hmm. so it's the wholesale rate plus some you know minimal administrative 10%. charge. Um, mm -hmm. Is it my understanding that that is what that number yes, that you just yes, sir, 10%. So, so the, the wholesale rate is uh. Six dollars right. a thousand gallons. Is that right? Uh, I believe it's five sixty-seven in this. Yes. Uh, plus, exact. plus ten percent. Yes, sir. Yeah, That's correct. So six times a uh, uh, hundred is six hundred seven hundred dollars is, is the bill. I don't know why. But I saw. I I looked at the adjustment uh, amount there, right? This amount right here. Mm -hmm. Um, so actually, yeah, when we do our process, what we do is we apply that wholesale rate plus 10% to anything in excess of the normal average. So right. um, in his case, six was the prior year at that time. If we would have had two or three years of history, we would have averaged right. those multiple years, but we didn't. We only had one. Um, so what that does is that uses the normal tiers of water rates for those, you know, however many, in this case it was six months. And then anything above that is what was charged the wholesale rate plus 10%. And so um, that ended up being from a little over a $3,000 bill. The credit offered for, you know, per the leak policy was nineteen ninety um, and 42 cents. So that, oh, that's about 2,000. That's yes. the credit amount. That's the credit. Yes, this that is the makes more that sense to me than that's the, the build account. amount. I yeah. apologize if I misspoke that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that would be a reduction of your bill by $2,000. And I think per our, you know, per our policy, that's about what we can, you know, offer. And, and you know, I think possibly the commission as well. Um, volume charges for excess water usage may re be reduced to the actual per gallon cost to the city, plus the administrative fee, not to exceed ten percent. And so, that's generally been our process. When there has been proof of a leak, we go straight to kind of that amount, and then anything above that would would normally come here, but. Um, I'm not sure per the policy if there's really any further that it allows us to go other than perhaps, um, you know, maybe all of it in wholesale plus 10 percent. So that would be a very small change. In the right, right. Especially given that our first couple tiers, I think, are, are actually right. lower than right. the wholesale rate there. Well, so I don't I don't think it would make a, a huge difference, maybe a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> so. Right, so instead of 3,000 and change, it's 714 plus a small adjustment, right? I mean, plus the act, plus the usage. Um, it would be, yes, it would be the 714, it looks like, plus um, any wastewater fees and other things that were included in the bill, right. so. But that would, be the, that would be the wholesale charge plus the $24 for um, the regular tiers for those other six gallons of water. We've been paying our bill. Right, and this one. Just isolated this one month. Right, right, right. 
no, I appreciate that. And, and even the policy says you don't even have to pay the disputed month. So I don't know if that means it has or has not been um, paid. And we understand either way. Um, one, while I, I understand um, even the $1,000 bill is, a, is still a large amount, um, certainly, I'm not certain what other adjustments are available to us other than to basically reduce the bill by almost two thirds. Does anyone have a? That's what I read. Well, I, I understand. I wasn't expecting to have the entire no, no, it's okay and, and removed. And, and I do remember Sharon doing a sort of back of the envelope calculation on wholesale water rates. I just didn't know that it ever had been put into a formal offer because the 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 bill I keep getting still reflects three thousand right. plus dollars so that are I think that's we unpaid. just need a motion to adjust the bill according to this formula, right? I think that that sounds. Like the extent do, of our ability. Do we need yeah. to do it, or can y'all just I do think it? Well, I guess. I, is it there's it, does it need to be a formal motion for us? Or are you guys already empowered without this coming to utility for further? This like adjustment has already been offered. It just wasn't accepted. Oh, okay. 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 Well, okay. So. The, so we we do try to help provide. Well, at least provide. Um, the staff here with the ability to do basically what what we can do here which is we're somewhat limited to this wholesale pricing plus the 10 percent administrative fee it seems like the offer is for the 1990 dollars reduction in your bill um, and that's that's about as much as we can do i don't think we need to motion it but i'm not sure if there's anything else you'd like to request from us and i, I guess that that feels like a fair amount I don't know it was two thousand to fix it. It was now a thousand for the water. It was three thousand. <sighs> well, I will say it's that uh, hard to live in an old house. Electric meters are on the way, uh, and that will one allow you to allow all of us uh, to track these things uh, faster. But also maybe that will uh, address the uh, the issue of your meter being in the back of the property. So they won't have to necessarily read it. Right. Um, if with the electronic meters, it'll be it'll be burst. So um, and you'll spot, any way a, to, so you'll spot a leak more quickly because you can it'll check send you a, They'll send you an email when you're, we have a leak. Yeah, that would have been nice to, because um, <laughs> um, there was nothing visual to yeah. indicate I, that something was happening. Is there any way to know, is it recorded when my meter is read at what date? I mean, I don't know how to dispute that. That just seems really weird that in a week, all of a sudden, 125,000 gallons of water was coming out of that. Uh, you said, you said, hey, notice the leak when you came out to read the meter, right? Nate came out. Well, that's the only time they ever come to my house. Right. There. So, but if I look at my bill, it says that the 23rd is the billing cycle. That's the, yeah, that's generally the due date. The due date. Okay, all right, so I, I, I won't. There's no correlation then with right. the 23rd. Right, and he, he okay. may have found it on you know, the 20th or the 21st, and it had been you know, leaking since the previous read of the 20th or the 21st. So that's when about they read, and it's due on the 23rd of the month. So um, it's, it's hard to yeah. tell without being there. I wish there were more details. Well, no, he had to come to there. knock on my door because he couldn't uh, get to the meter because it was underwater. Right. So that was on the 28th. On the 28th. 
I just know that Nate did not like my backyard, and he had complained <laughs> in the past about because he, he has to lay on his stomach and he has to dig through the leaves, and then yeah. anyway, not relevant for this discussion. No, um, but understandable. So, do I just wait for my next the next billing cycle, and it'll reflect the 1900 production? Is, it, is that what I'm doing? Sure. So, if, uh, yeah, with the approval of this, we'll apply that adjustment to your account. Uh, okay. If, I don't believe we need a, a, a motion, like you said, this is a normal adjustment, but mm -hmm. um, we're happy to apply that. And your next okay. bill will show the 2001 reduction. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's frustrating. It's just <laughs> really frustrating. Thanks for coming in today. Cause no, I, I think I was pleasure. the only thing on the agenda. I've had the same, exact same thing. We, we, I think we've all been there. Okay. All right. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. Moving on to regular agenda, uh, the next regular agenda item, which is discussion regarding cellular service and coverage in Rollingwood. Is there an, an update on this from the prior no, meeting? No, no staff update. Oh, I better run this phone. Um, yes. This yes. is go, Elizabeth Bray's uh, item, I believe. Okay. Um, well, last, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, I remember that um, uh, Phil and I had done a little bit of looking into our current coverage um, by the service providers, um, which then included also seeing where all the different towers were um, in the surrounding areas of Austin and beyond. Um, we, I forwarded um, an email with some pictures of that coverage and where the towers are um, to be shared, I guess, in this meeting and for a discussion uh, to be had um, on, on sort of if there are, if there is an appetite for next steps and what they may be. Um, this was a previous agenda item from a previous meeting and I just volunteered to be one of the uh, data gatherers mm -hmm. and so to my knowledge that's been disseminated to everyone and uh, and now there's I put the item on the agenda to understand what we should be doing next thank you and I'll jump in here to uh, so yeah Elizabeth and I worked on this she was able to pull up the maps that are provided by the different carriers uh, given that and you have those in your packet uh, they look like the coverage is great mm -hmm. <laughs> We know. <laughs> Did you read the disclosure? Yeah. <laughs> we know there's still issues. Yeah. And and you know I I've, I've been frustrated. I mean ju just now trying to speak to Elizabeth on the cell phone. I went outside to try to get better coverage and that type of thing. So there can be issues if you have, for instance, a metal roof that w that will interfere. So there are particular issues that may be just because of the construction and makeup of your house and you know if you're sitting in a Faraday cage I don't know <laughs> but um, and I or think there may be issues between cellular service providers so if you're you know you're T-Mobile and you're calling someone with AT&T there may be you know, some kind of a handshake issue or whatever. None of us are experts in cellular service. I certainly am not, but um, clearly there are still issues and a lot of it has to do with our hilly topography, uh, I think. Um, but it might also be service providers. So I don't know what that leaves us other than, you know, they're all, it almost seems like they're providing marketing material showing that they're doing a fabulous job. Um, so what, one of the items in the uh, uh, packet was a map of people or locations where there were amplifiers or some, I forget what they were called, right. to in boost the signal in businesses. Right. Do you understand what those devices are and w whether we should put, put them around rolling with? 
I don't, other than I imagine those are because particular businesses probably are experiencing issues and uh, therefore, you know, they, they probably put those boosters up. I would assume those may be amplifiers that are amplifying the, you know, for general service that might just not be, you know, particular to whatever business or facility is there. And I'm assuming too that probably they may even be getting some kind of, you know, revenue from the cellular providers to, to, to boost those signals. I don't know. I do know at one time the city of Rolling Wood was in, in discussions with AT&T and AT&T was going to put boosters out on B Caves Road and, or some other places and somehow that fell through the cracks and never occurred. So the technology is always changing. Hopefully there will be technology that might be cost effective and could get rolled out, but I don't, I don't know. We could investigate that. That might be the next step to try to find out what exactly those boosters are, what exactly they're doing. If that is something that would be helpful in general. Um, Phil, I can answer that. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I can answer a couple of those technical questions because I looked into them. Uh, first of all, the coverage maps in and of themselves, um, if you look closely, do not say that they are actually doing a fabulous job in a lot of regards because um, it shows a great variation across Rolling Wood, um, especially on, I think, the Verizon and T-Mobile maps, um, where it is also the difference between 4 and 5G uh, coverage from the tower, which is important because um, if your phone is a 5G phone and you have it in your settings, to be reaching to 5G on towers, if you don't have that reach in the coverage of where you're living, it actually makes the reception far worse. But you can't ask people to be turning that setting on and off their phone every time they drive in and out of the streets of Rolling Wood. Um, so that is a particular problem, coupled with they upgrade different towers at different times with 5G and so if you happen to be pinging on a tower that is down, then you're going much further to try and get that signal, which you're not getting, and it makes it even worse. Um, with regards to the boosters that are on the buildings, those aren't actually, um, those are broadband boosters. And so uh, cell phone companies offer something similar to that for independent residence homes. We have tried them with both T-Mobile and Verizon in our own home to see the efficacy of them. They do not work and they only give you one per home. We actually had them give us each three. So there was one on each floor of our house. It did not help. Um, it only moderately helps when you are on Wi-Fi instead of using the cell signal. But then again, what happens when you leave your home? And it's the same thing for the businesses. It is helping support a broadband connection around those business areas. It does nothing for you when you walk down the street or drive down the street. Um, and so you can get some relief if you happen to be working from home, but not as you go about your daily life. Um, the main issue is that there has been tremendous pushback from residential areas for putting up cell towers. Um, and if you look at the map, there are no cell towers within miles and miles and miles of us, which is the issue. There used to be up until last year, one on Walsh Tarleton and 360, but they took that down. And that is why our cell phone service in general has been getting worse because that tower was taken down. So. You know, they have ways of, uh, you know, making the towers not unattractive. We also have the whole Delana track area where I don't think a Rolling Wood resident would mind if there was a tower there. Um, I also think that uh, it would be very attractive to our partner, 
or our neighboring cities like Westlake, um, if there was a tower somewhere nearby. Um, and it would also be attractive to the cell phone companies whom I've spoken to, at least one of them, just to get a, a, uh, a bit of a temperature check. So I believe the discussion is if we have an appetite for going through the exploratory process of getting a tower, if so, where it might go, uh, and there's even a potential revenue stream for rolling what I understand from putting in the tower, which is not insubstantial. Aren't if a tower were put in, isn't a lot of the coverage determined by line of sight, or is that not true? No, it's not line of sight, it's distance. Okay. Well, that's, a, that's a bit counter to the conversation we had with AT&T, but that was a year ago. Um, but they had diagrams with towers and mountains and straight lines going through, but they mentioned the concept of small cell and being able to put things within, you know, multiple cell towers, not towers, but multiple devices within. Uh, but ultimately, again, just to recall, that, that call ended with them saying, we went through this process with you once before, and it takes at least 24 months, and there was very little interest. In, well, hey, great, so what's the next steps? And they're like, there really aren't any. Um, at least that was that particular discussion with AT&T, which it also, the challenge I felt was, it's like, you have to go to each carrier and be like, so does that mean it's three separate towers, or is it a single fixture but each one would would be willing to go on it um, and I do agree that there's a exploratory is exactly what it seems to continue to be it's chipping away at trying to get information what is it how does no one deal with this issue anywhere it's a problem with the cell phone how do you get someone to come help um, and it seems like you call and they tell you nothing <laughs> So I'm very curious as to how we go about next steps I think part of the process was just trying to learn from a, from a broader residential area, how big of an issue is this? You know, we have the water issue, we have other capital improvement projects. If we come back and say, hey, we're gonna put a new, a new cell tower in Austin, let's start having calls about this and see who likes it. I'm really curious as to what the overall uh, reaction would be. Uh, certainly concerned that it would immediately be negative, which it's like, we really need to have better cell phone service here from an emergency standpoint and certainly from a personal use standpoint. Um, as well as for our commercial corridor. So it seems like it would be beneficial to all of us to figure out a way to improve this particular infrastructure. Um, but again, I, I, I don't know what the, what the best steps forward are. These are, are great steps that we're taking now. So what, is, what does that next step look like? Well, and I think also if there was, I think the key point is that this, this may be able to be done with no cost to residents. So wouldn't it be lovely if there was something that we could provide that was just a benefit. Certainly. I Actually, mean, I'm willing to, I think it is probably necessary because I think things have also changed and I think also pressure for service has be increased dramatically with people working from home more. Um, and so um, that, that pressure, I mean, will also impact the decisions that the cell phone companies make themselves. Um, I, I got this information from someone who's a senior VP at AT&T. Um, and so I think maybe an idea is to reach out to at least one company, if not, you know, the big three. and. Maybe we get a, a volunteer for each one of those um, to see what the status is. I'm, I'm happy to volunteer my time to do some of that. Thank you. Ashley, do we still have the contact information from when we had the Verizon reps come into town? And they came in under the They were really trying to sell us on their, their equivalent of the emergency services line, um, you know, for, for the uh, police department. but. 
we were like, that's all great, but what about this? And they were like, oh, you can, you know, but that didn't go anywhere, even with several follow-ups. Um, right. But do we still have that contact info? I'm sure we do. Um, if there's been any turnover, they, you know, they may not be the same folks anymore. Yeah. But I think we could definitely reach out to them and see if they just want to kind of bring that conversation up again. Or okay. if there's any new, you know, new blood in there who's real excited about trying to get us our service. Elizabeth, given that you have already reached out to AT&T, would you, would you like to take ownership of that particular pathway? Sure. And I'll work with Ashley on Verizon. And if anyone wants to reach out to anyone else, <laughs> feel free. But you know, I don't know how many folks use T-Mobile. Uh, I feel like certainly Verizon and AT&T would get us a good portion of the of the population. And then if the, even if we make traction there, it, it puts us in position to put some pressure on T-Mobile to say, hey, the other guys are doing stuff, you should probably step up and do it too. So uh, maybe that's- Well, I think the we only need one of them to take the lead because uh, they usually share services on a tower, right. don't they? They certainly should be able to. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, when I talked to some of the different tower services, some of them said, put up a tower and then the different companies put their equipment on it and then there were other ones who said that basically you know someone like AT&T would put up a tower and, and share so I don't have clarity on particularly what's going on with that but I do think that it's worth finding out and, and the technology is changing all the time so hopefully between AT&T and Verizon, we can start getting some some answers on what might be possible. Um, it'd be great if it's not line of sight particularly, but, and you know, there is a higher ridge over there near Delana, but I believe probably the church or Endeavor owns that higher ridge. I think the, low, the lower areas are what, you know, yeah. is more public parkland available to Does anybody that type have, of thing. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Does anybody have any, I have a vague recollection of what happened when we tried to use the emergency tower and that was a big resounding no. I saw that on that telephone pole that I believe was used for the, well the emergency tower got taken down yeah. but there's another telephone pole up there. I was just looking for it I'm like where's the emergency tower? Yeah, that got taken down, but there's AT&T equipment on that telephone pole up on the upper park. I don't, I don't know the extent of that, or I don't know if that's been decommissioned or what. But there, but it's clearly marked AT&T, and there is equipment up there at the upper park. And it's so. probably the highest point, and you could. Well, that's yeah, that's. The upper park is one of the higher points in the city of Rollingwood that would, you know, get, if there is line of sight issues, it would get that kind of reach. So. Maybe the equipment's not as obvious anymore. Maybe people are fed up with. Well, the there service. are, there are, and I did look, there, there are things that they have that they try to make the towers look like trees. Usually it's some kind of a big pine cypress or something like that, that here in Texas, our trees are not, you know, that as tall. So, but, uh, you know, I, I do think something in our park perhaps would be more palatable than something viewing over somebody's backyard Absolutely. that type of thing and, and i think i think we might run into issues with uh people if if they suddenly have a large tower uh that they can see from their backyard and then yeah that that type of thing so i yeah I, I think yeah. i just want to what i'd like to learn from the exploratory portion this is is our only option a hundred foot tower and if the answer is yes we can put a hundred foot tower in and it's let's say best case scenario and it's free and we'll put it in next year great then i'd like to go back and understand because what happened is we tried to put a hundred foot tower in and the residents said no 
So, so that was that was. When I looked at the tower, and initially I thought it was going to be roughly where that emergency thing was. When I looked into it, my understanding after looking into it was it was going to be more over in between where Western Hills Pool is and the Rollingwood Park, roughly where the dumpsters or the proposed milk and cookies facility was going to be. And it was, you know, kind of right there on Rollingwood Drive, and it was going to be Massive. looming large right there. I do think that might have been part of, if that is correct, and that was when I looked into it, that was my understanding, then that might have been part of the problem is because, once again, we were very visible, very high, very close to the street, and in line of sight of a lot of residents instead of looking at nice parkland they were going to be looking at a large cell phone tower as well as the people in the pool so i think it might have been partly a location issue and so maybe that's learning yep. is location they must have chosen that location for a reason i would imagine yeah. uh so then the question is is it have we gotten to the point where that location is is variable now because of technology or what have you yeah. so maybe we can we can figure that out so um so thank you, Elizabeth, for offering to do some more legwork on AT&T. I will work on Verizon, um, and we'll, we'll update the, the agenda when we have information on that. Any other comments on this or anything else? Then with that, I'll motion to adjourn.